So we're group 5 and we're here to tackle about electrical safety. Next. So what is electricity? Electricity can be defined as the flow of electrons along a conductor. Usually, the charges of electricity is carried by free-flowing electrons. So lahat naman tayo ay familiar na sa electricity and kung gaano siya ka-relevant lalo na ngayon sa mga buhay natin, lalo na ngayon na pandemic. Paano na paano siya naging relevant sa buhay natin? So, for um, deeper understanding, a uh, quick recap lang about electricity and how it exists. Um, here's next, um, here's a, an image presentation about an atom. So, what is an atom? Atom consists of proton and neutrons that forms nucleus. So, orbiting in nucleus, around the nucleus are the electrons. So, electrons, sila yung, di ba, kanina sabi, free-flowing electrons. Sila yung, um, um, electrons are, are lighter. So, mas, sila yung mas may, ten, may mas, mas, mas may tendency, um, magpaikot-ikot around an atom kesa sa nucleus and, and protons. And dahil sa electrons, kaya merong electricity na nag exist Next. So, here are the elements of electricity. So the first one is the voltage. So for an electrons to move between two points, dapat merong potential difference na mag exist between two points. Then na may measure siya in terms of volts. So the higher the potential difference, it is more easier for the electrons to move from one point to another. And syempre, mas mataas yung current. Diba? Alam naman natin guys, pag nag experiment tayo, pag mas mataas yung voltage, mas mataas yung current. Yun. Next, the resistance. The flow of electrons is go also governed by the resistance of offered by the conducting materials. It is measured in ohms. So, from the word itself, resistance, resist. Siya yung nagre-resist. Siya yung um, nag-limit ng flow of electrons. Lalo na, um, for example, di ba, pag nagawa tayo ng experiment, nagkakonduct tayo ng experiment, meron tayong tinatawag na um, resistor, nakakatulong siya to protect natin, to protect the other um, conducting materials kasi hindi lahat ng materials is kayang um, kaya kayang yung voltage hindi lahat ng materials kaya yung matataas masyado na voltahe ng mga materials na ang kailangan lang is mabababang voltage and resistance, resistor is um, here, its job is to um, to limit or to protect the other materials. So, for isa pang example is yung fuse din. Um, sa, sobra, sa sobrang taas ng voltage, sa sobrang taas din ng current na nagpo-flow, mas, mas madaming electrons ang nagpo-flow. So, ang trabaho ng, ng fuse is um, sa sobrang taas ng voltage and ng current, para mas maiwasan yung um, worst damage na pwedeng mangyari, siya yung um, kung parang siya yung nasisira, mapuputol, mayroong wire dun sa loob, mapuputol, kumbaga isa-stop niya yung pag-flow na um, electricity or ng electron sa circuit. So, yun yung resistance. Next is yung current. The current flow in a circuit is measured in terms of amperes. So, kung sa voltage is volts, resistance is ohms, sa current man amperes. So, alam naman natin lahat na kapag may, may current, ibig sabihin may voltahe. So, pag walang voltage, walang current, walang electrical current na mag occur So, ito yung na dumadaloy ang kuryente kapag may current. Next. The relationship between the elements of electricity was introduced by Mr. George Simon Ohm. It has been known as the Ohm's Law. So, sobrang familiar tayo dyan. Ito, um, Ohm's Law ang madalas nating gamitin. Lalo na sa mga basic equations. Yan. So, the current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the current. I is equals to V over R by triangle. Next is um, Ito naman, pinapakita namin dito Yung normal resistance Resistance values of various materials So hindi ko na isa-isahin Pero yan um, 
Napakita dito yung material and yung resistance ng bawat material. So, ito yung source namin, Electrical Safety Handbook. Kung preferred your understanding, kung gusto nyo pa mas mag-dig deep, yan, you can search din dyan. Next is, the human resistance to electric current naman. So, yung body area and yung resistance ng bawat area and kung ano yung sitwasyon mo. Kung, for example, kung basa ka ba or kilo ka ba, ganyan. Yun. Next. So, this one, these are the hazards of electricity. So, meron kaming three, some, three types. The electrical sh electric shock, the burns, and the fire and explosions. So, alam naman natin electric shock, burns, fire, and explosion. So, what are the common causes of electrical injuries or accidents? So, touching of live parts. Pwede siyang, um, mayroon siyang electric shock. Diba nga, as low as 2 volts, makaka-experience na tayo na yung parang mag-ground. Yan, so, depende pa sa kung taas ng voltage. It can lead to fire and explosions and even burns. So, we have to be careful. So, next one is the short circuit. Um, pag mali yung pagkakamount, pag mali yung, um, yung material na ginamit, yung voltage, uh, yung value yan, it can lead to short circuit. Pwede may pumuto. Special, di ba, for example, yung capacitor, pag mali yung pagkakalagay mo, pwede siyang pumuto. Then, the inadequate guarding, the overloading, the breaking of connections. So, the next one is the effects of electric current in the human body. Um, Ms. Calonia is here to present and to tackle about the effects of electric current in the human body. Take it away! Effects of electric current in the human body On the table, we can see the different ranges of current and the effects of it in the human body. The first one is the 0 to 1 milliampere. In this, there is no sensation and it is not felt. Ito po yung mga current na sa sobrang baba po ay hindi na po siya halos maramdaman ng katawan po natin kasi nga po mababa lang po yung current niya. The next one is the 1 milliampere. Shock perceptible reflects action to jump away. There is no danger from shock but sudden motion may cause accident. Ito naman po yung mga... Incidente po na minsan po, halimbawa, yung nakapagsaksak tayo tapos parang may biglang dumaloy na kuryente po sa katawan natin kaya may mga actions po agad tayo na napapabitaw bigla sa saksakan, yun po. The next one is the 3 milliampere. It is the painful shock. Um, dito naman po dahil tumaas na po siya ng konti kaya parang um, masakit na po siya at medyo ano na po siya sa katawan natin, medyo ramdam na talaga yung sakit no kuryente po. The next one is the 6 milliampere. It is the let go current for women. Ito naman po yung tinatawag na pinaka uh, mataas na um, current na kayang i-hold ng mga kababaihan po. The next one is the 9 milliampere. Let go current for men. Ito naman po yung pinaka mataas na current na kayang i-hold naman ng mga kalalakihan. The next one is the 10 milliampere. Local muscles contraction sufficient to cause feeling freezing to the circuit for 2.5 of the population. Um, dito naman po, mar parang uh, apektado na po talaga yung muscles po sa katawan natin. Kaya parang delik delikado na po talaga siya. The next one is the 15 milliampere. Local muscle construction sufficient to cause feeling freeze, feeling freezing to the circuit for 50% of the population. Um, dito naman po, yun nga po, katulad po nung sa 10 milliampere, compared po dito sa 15, na mas mataas na po, kaya talagang delikado na siya sa mga muscles natin kasi naapektuhan na po talaga siya dahil sa taas na nung current na pumapasok or natatanggap na nung katawan natin. The next one is the 30 milliampere. Breathing difficulty can cause unconscious, unconsciousness. Um, dito naman po, dahil sa sobrang taas na nung current niya, kaya parang pag dumalay na po siya sa katawan ng tao, parang um, nahihirapan na pong huminga. Parang doon na rin po yung tinatawag na electric shock. Doon na po nag-uumpisa yung parang ganun po. Kaya parang 
yung iba po na nakokuryente na umaabot na yun sa pag sa electric shock no wala na po ng malay the next one is the 50 to 100 milliampere possible ventricular fibrillation of the heart um dito naman po yung tinatawag po na ventricular fibrillation it is a heart condition that results in death um dahil po sa sobrang taas na talaga ng current na dumaloy or dadaloy sa katawan po ng isang tao, naapektuhan na po talaga yung um, mga muscles, pati po lalo na yung puso po. Kaya po, nagkukos na talaga siya ng death po. Next one is the 100 to 200 milliampere. Certain ventricular fibrillation of the heart. Yun nga po, katulad po nung sa what, 50 to 100 milliampere, yun nga po, nag, nagkukos na talaga siya ng death kasi sobrang taas na po nung current na papasok sa katawan ng isang tao 200 milliampere severe burns and muscular constructions um dahil po sa pataas na talaga yung current lalo na siya sa padelikado yung epekto po sa katawan natin kaya po um dito uh, umaabot na sa point na yung mga uh, muscles po natin sa katawan ay nasusunog na dahil sa sobrang taas na ng current na dadaloy po sa katawan natin yung mga electric shock kasama na po yung mga severe burns po 1 ampere irreparable damage to body tissue um severe muscular constructions so severe that chest muscles clamp heart and stop it during duration of shock um this prevents ventricular fibrillations um, dito po talaga, uh, delikado na po siya sa katawan natin. Kaya, kinalalabasan na lang po niya ay to death na po. Dahil po sa sobrang taas na ng current na dumaloy sa katawan ng isang tao na nakuryente o makakuryente po. So, dito naman po, let go current. Katulad po nung nabanggit ko kanina sa 6 mA at 9 mA, na kayang i-hold po ng men and women, let go current is the maximum current that a person can tolerate when holding a conductor and can still free himself or herself by muscular stimulation. The next one is the ventricular fibrillation. Most death by electric shock is caused by the ventricular fibrillation. It is a condition wherein the heart will not pulse regularly, causing the heart to cease functioning. Once this occurs, the victim will be dead in a few minutes even if the electric source is interrupted. Um, yun nga po, dahil na rin po sa electric shock na sobrang taas ng current, um, yun nga po, naglilid na sa death dahil hindi na po talaga kaya ng katawan ng isang tao i-hold yung current na pumapasok po sa katawan niya. Um, even small amounts of current can cause minor shock sensation and result to secondary accidents. Um, katulad na lang po nung sa mga aksidente po na na hindi po inaasahan, katulad po ng mga biglaan po natin pagsasaksak sa mga extension po, sa mga saksakan po talaga. Lalo na kapag halimbawa po basa yung kamay mo na bigla ka nagsaksak. So, may possibility talaga na makuryente ka or tapos yung bigla ang action mo dahil na kuryente ka na, may, na maaaring mag-lead ng second accidents katulad ng halimbawa po na um, uh, madulas ka um, uh, nawag naman sana tapos or kaya po uh, mauntog or ano po tumama ka sa ibang bagay yun po yung mga secondary accidents po electrical related injuries there are four main types of injuries caused by electric currents the first one is electrocution or the fatal electric shock, burns, and pulse. These injuries can happen in various ways. Direct contact with the electrical energy. When the electricity arcs or jumps through a gas such as air to a person who is grounded, that would provide an alternative route to the ground for the electricity. For example, kapag naka-encounter tayo ng mga electrical sparks, may possibility na maging part tayo na electricity kapag tayo ay exposed sa kuryente since tayo ay nasa ground. 
thermal burns including flash burns from heat generated by an electric arc and flame burns from materials that catch fire from heating or ignition by electric currents. High voltage contact burns can burn internal tissues while leaving only very small injuries on the outside of the skin. So kapag malaking bultay or mataas din na kuryente yung nareceive natin, maaari itong mag-cause ng malaking damage sa ating katawan. Hindi lang siya electric shock na mapipil natin, pwede rin siya mag-iwan ng mga sugat or malaki din yung damage sa skin or muscles natin. Muscle contractions or a startle reaction can cause a person to fall from a ladder, scaffold, or aerial bucket. The fall can cause serious injuries. Kapag nasa mataas naman tayo na lugar or nag-work tayo sa mga heights, then kapag na-expose tayo sa electricity or nagkaroon ng electrical shocks, pwede tayo makareceive ng malaking injuries maliban lang sa electrical shocks kundi pwede rin tayong magkaroon ng dislocation sa katawan natin. Actions to take So kapag naka-encounter tayo ng mga tao na nakokuryente, huwag natin sila basta-basta hawakan Kundi maghanap tayo ng things na hindi nagkakandak na electricity gaya ng mga rubber, dry wood na pwede nilang hawakan habang nakukuryente sila. And as much as possible, kailangan din natin mahingi ng tulong sa ibang tao. Kung hindi talaga kaya, gawin natin yung proper way or tandaan natin yun kapag naka-encounter tayo ng ganong situation. Then, pwede rin kasi tayo maging, maging victim kung hindi natin nagawa ng nasa tamang paraan yung mga dapat nating gawin. Philippine Electrical Code in Electrical Safety Rule number 1210, the Philippine Electrical Code is hereby adopted and standards contained therein shall be considered safety standards to the extent that they safeguard any person employed in any workplace and control the practice of electrical engineering. In this, installation as used in this rule shall mean assemblage of electrical equipment in a given location, designed for coordinated operation, properly erected and wired. Approved shall mean acceptable to the Bureau after test and examination show compliance with standards. These are the general provisions of Philippine Electrical Code in Electrical Safety. Number 1. No electrical installation shall be undertaken without the plans having been approved by the Secretary or his authorized representative. Number 2. No service or power supply shall be connected to any electrical installation by any utility company supplying electricity or by any person until the necessary final inspection is conducted and a safety certificate or permit issued by the regional labor office or authorized representative having jurisdiction over the case. Number 3. The following are excluded in the coverage of this rule. A. Electric generating plants with franchises which are under the jurisdiction of the Board of Power and Water Works. Letter B. Electric generating plants and electrical installations in radio and television station which are under the jurisdiction of the Department of Public Works, Transportation and Communications. And letter C. Electrical installation for conveyances used in connection with water transportation which are under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Customs. Number 4. The exemptions under 3 A and B are only for the design and construction. The electrical installation may be inspected by the regional labor office or authorized representative if such poses danger to the safety and health of the workers therein. And lastly, number 5, the practice of the electrical engineering as required under this rule shall be subjected to the provisions of the Philippine Electrical Engineering Law, RA184. Electrical Protection Sample checklist for basic electrical safety. First, inspect cords and plugs. So, bago natin gamitin yung mga power tools, kailangan muna natin i-check yung mga wires or yung mga plugs kung may damage. So, para maiwasan natin yung electric shock. Next is, eliminate octopus connections. Dito naman, 
iwasan natin yung pagsasaksak na maraming power cord sa isang outlet or sa extensions para maiwasan natin yung overloading. At iwasan din natin yung kapag i-disconnect na natin yung device na ginamit natin is yung hinihila natin yung cords. Dapat ang hilayin natin is yung mismong plug para hindi siya magkaroon ng sparks or yung tinatawag natin na electrical shock. Next is, never break up the third prong on the plug. So, dito naman, lagi natin isure yung third prong or yung example natin is yung sa mga charger ng laptop natin. Dapat gumagamit tayo ng mga adapter. So, kapag gumagamit naman tayo nun, dapat ensure natin na nakakonek siya dun sa mismong ground. Hindi siya yung para nakalabas kasi minsan hindi natin napapansin na yung dalawang paalang pala ng plug yung nakakonek dun sa adapter. So, lagi natin i-check yun para maiwasan natin yung pagkakaroon ng electrical shock. Next is, never use extension cords as permanent wiring. From the word itself, extension. Kagamitin lang natin yung extension kapag kinukulang tayo sa saksakan or sa outlet. And then, kapag sobrang ikli nung cords ng isang device or ng power tools, So, yun nga, yung extension, gagamitin lang natin siya kapag may mahalaga talaga tayong isasaksak na power tools. O kaya kapag sobrang ikle or kinukulang tayo sa outlet, yung extension yung gagamitin natin. Pero hindi big sabihin nun na lagi natin siyang gagamitin na as a permanent wiring para may iwasan din yung pagkakaroon ng overloading. Next is tips for working with power tools. So, ano-ano ba yung mga power tools? Yun yung nangailangan ng electricity. So, bago natin sila gagamitin, kailangan tandaan muna natin yung mga tips para may uwasan yung mga accidents or injuries. So, first, switch tools off before connecting them to a power supply. So, bago natin i-connect yung mga power tools is ensure natin na naka- switch off siya para hindi siya nagkakaroon ng sparks kapag sinaksak na natin siya sa power supply. Then next is disconnect power supply before making adjustments. So, dapat naka-adjust na siya pag kapag isasaksak na natin siya sa power supply para hindi naman nagkaroon ng mga electrical shock. So, next is ensure tools are properly grounded or double insulated. The grounded tool must have an approved three-wire cord with a three-prong plug. This plug should be plugged in a properly grounded three-pole outlet. So, kapag yung power tools na gagamitin natin ay mayroong three-prong plug, dapat gumamit tayo ng adapter kapag hindi siya available sa outlet natin. Then, i-check din natin kung yung third-prong plug is nakakonek mismo sa ground. Next is test all tools for effective grounding with a continuity tester or a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI before use. So later, i-discuss ko naman kung ano yung function ng GFCI outlet and yung naitutulong nito sa both user and power tools na ginagamit natin. So there's still remaining tips about working with power tools. Next is... Do not bypass the switch and operate the tools by connecting and disconnecting the power cord. So, kapag may mga power tools tayong gagamitin, iti-check mo na lagi natin yung switch kung naka-off ba or naka-on. Kasi kapag sinaksak agad natin siya na naka-on, pwede siya magkaroon ng sparks or yung electrical shock na tinatawag natin. Next is, do not use electrical tools in wet conditions or damp locations unless tool is connected to a GFCI. So, dito naman, bago tayo gumamit ng mga electrical tools, dapat i-check muna natin yung surroundings natin kung may mga basa na part para maiwasan yung pagkakaroon na electrical shock kasi pwede ito maging another route para sa electricity. Next is, do not clean tools with flammable or toxic solvents. Example ng flammable or toxic solvents is yung alcohol. Alam naman natin na yung alcohol is flammable and nagkakos siya ng fire. So, dapat hindi natin siya ginagamit na panglinis ng electrical tools. Next is, do not operate tools in an area containing explosive vapors or gases. So, bago tayo mag-operate ng mga electrical tools, dapat 
i-check natin yung surroundings natin. Baka may mga explosive vapors or gases. So, isa pang example nito is kapag nasa gas station tayo, di ba pinagbabawalan tayo gumamit ng mga cellphone? Kasi yung cellphone, meron siyang static electrical charge na pwedeng mag-cause ng fire. Next is Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter or GFCI. GFCI works by detecting any loss of electrical current in a circuit. When a loss is detected, the GFCI turns the electricity off before severe injuries or electrocution can occur. So, yung isang function ng GFCI is yung nade-detect nyo kung meron bang nalulos na electrical current sa circuit. So, kapag na-detect niya na merong any loss of electrical current dun sa circuit, automatically nag up yung mismong outlet or yung GFCI mismo kasi para maiwasin yung pagkakaroon ng electrical injuries dun sa user and then yung ma-prevent masira yung mismong power tools na ginagamit natin. So, kung meron naman tayong tips for working with power tools, meron din tayong tips for working with power cords. First is, keep power cords clear of tools during use. So, dapat i-check natin yung mga cords. Baka may mga damage nga kapag ginamit natin. So, next is, suspend power cords over aisles or work areas to eliminate stumbling or tripping hazards. So, dito, para maiwasan yung pagkatalisod kapag naglalakad yung tao, lalo na kapag nakaharam yung mga power cords. Then, para ma-prevent na biglang matanggal yung mga power tools kapag nasasanggi yung mga power cords. Next is replace open front plugs with dead front plugs. Dead front plugs are sealed and present less danger of shock or short circuit. So, sa mga power cords, dapat iti-check din natin yung mismong plug niya kung open front plug siya. Kasi karabihan na ito, sa mga bilog na saksakan, yung lumuluwang yung cover nung pin, kakatanggal ka bet, lumuluwang siya. So, dapat iti-check natin baka nasira na. So, dapat palitan natin yung mismong nagko-cover nun sa pin para maiwasan yung pagkakaroon ng electrical shock or short circuit. So, next is, do not use light duty power cords. So, depende to sa power tools kung ano yung nare-required niyang klase ng wire na ginagamit natin. Next, do not carry electrical tools by the power cord. So, kapag binibit-bit natin yung mga electrical tools, dapat hindi yung cord yung hinahawakan natin. Dapat yung mismong tools na ginagamit natin. And lastly, do not tie power cords in tight knots. Knots can cause short circuits and shocks. Loop the cords or use a twist lock plug. So, kapag nililigpit na natin yung mga power cords na ginamit natin na power tools, dapat iwasan natin yung magpagkakaroon ng tight knots kasi pwede siya mag-cause ng short circuit. So, dapat gumamit tayo ng mga twist lock plug na kapag nililigpit natin or yung binibilog na natin yung mismong wire is nilalock niya na. Then, pwede mo rin siya tanggalin kapag gagamitin mo na yung power tools or yung cords na yon.